Hey, everybody. Welcome to another How to Succeed podcast. I'm your host, Mike Montague, and my guest this week is Danny Wood. He is the Sandler trainer from New Jersey. He's been doing this for a long time, and we're going to be talking about how to succeed at nailing your 30-second commercial. As always, the podcast is brought to you by Sandler, the worldwide leader in sales management and customer service training. Uh, it is copyrighted by Sandler Systems Inc. and protected by U.S. copyright laws. You can subscribe. You can like and, and share. And we are live right now if you're watching this live obviously if you're listening to the podcast later not so much but you can comment on facebook youtube uh linkedin twitter so let's hear from you and your best questions about the 30 second commercial all right danny uh let's get into it here i need a 30 second commercial on delivering a 30 second commercial what are we talking about today (laughs) okay all right well i'll tell you what mike um you know, it's, 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 it's so important. You know, I've been doing this for 23 years, 23 years this coming February. And the very first coaching session I had with my Sandler coach, he said, Danny, welcome to the network. We're going to work on a 30 second commercial because without it, we are nowhere. It's a conversation starter. It helps us to put ourselves uh, to relate to our prospects and to whoever it is that we're speaking to so that they, uh, it gives us credibility and it allows us to, um, I guess, uh, gain some leverage as a salesperson as well to qualify the conversation. So uh, it's, as you can hear, it's a, it's a very important piece of what we do. It's the foundation. And that's why I'm excited to be here today to talk about it. Yeah, I think it's interesting because it's really powerful in starting conversations. People always ask, what do you do? And you need to have a really good answer for that. Something that, that starts conversations, that gets people's interest. But there's also lots of other places that it uh, applies these days. I, I think like you need something for your LinkedIn bio. You need something maybe to shoot in a vidyard and send to a, a prospect over email. Um, you might be having somebody else introduce you and you need a, a referral script. And they're all kind of the same content, just packaged a, a little bit differently. So I guess the first question here, we always start with attitude is, yeah. Um, what's the ideal attitude when delivering a 30 second commercial? Uh, I think yeah. people get weird about this one and sometimes they, they try to overdo it and, and it sounds like a resume or, um, they make it all about them instead of the customer. What do you think about the yeah. ideal attitude? Yeah. You know, it's interesting. You know, I was, I was looking at the, you know, the, the new book, right. Uh, how to, uh, sell to the modern buyer. You know, the, the, the first rule is a conversation between adults and so really what we're doing is um, we're not making it all about us. Uh, we're not doing a feature and benefit dump. What we're doing is laying out, whether it was written or whether we're, we're discussing it, uh, who we are, what we do, and um, the issues, problems, challenges that uh, those in the ideal, let's call it the ideal client profile that we have, what are they experiencing? So, you know, you mentioned that's the first thing I did is put that in my LinkedIn. When we started with that many years ago, you wrote the book on it, right? I follow your direction, Mike. <laughs> uh, put it right in Thank there. Thank you. <laughs> but, oh, but um, yeah, so so when people see that, they can, um, you know, I guess, uh, relate to those issues that, that we help people with. So, you know, we all agree, I think, in the, in the sales world that people buy ways to, uh, they buy emotionally, they buy ways to avoid pain. Essentially, what we're doing in our commercial, we can talk about those elements, but we're putting in those issues, challenges, concerns, pains that our ideal prospect experiences. And that really helps when you're starting to qualify somebody. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I think one more ideal attitude off the top here is really about um, the misconception here that the 30 second commercial sounds like it needs to be 30 seconds. And in some cases you only get seven. So it might need to be like a one sentence commercial and other places it's okay. Like if you're in a conversation to maybe take longer than that, share some examples and relate to somebody or pause in the middle and ask questions from the other person. So could you tell us a little bit about maybe the the attitude towards our tonality that we don't need to be all hypey pitchy and excited we can actually slow down take our time ask some questions be like does that make sense have you ever heard of of sales training and and consulting before have you ever done anything like that they go oh yeah 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 i've done lots of sales training i've done this this and okay 
well, then what makes Sandler different is X, Y, and Z. And we can kind of have a, a conversation here, but what are your thoughts? Yeah, I, I think that um, when, well, when, when I when I do mine, um, I mean, first of all, you know, you, you can do it in, in, in whether it's, uh, you know, you, okay, you mentioned a condensed one. I mean, certainly on a cold call, right? Danny Wood, Sandler Training, Name Ring a Bell, you know, uh, sales, sales management training for an entrepreneurial, entrepreneurial driven firms, uh, entrepreneurial driven companies, and professional firms. Typically, we help them with this. Uh, would it make sense for us to continue a conversation about that? Um, but, you know, you also mentioned one that's longer. You know, if you're in a meeting where there are additional people coming in and they say, hey, then, you know, here's so and so and so and so, uh, you know, you're, you're able to introduce yourself with that. You're able to um, very often somebody says, what makes you different, uh, Mike? What makes you different, right? Puts us on the defensive, right? Becomes critical parent, as we might say. And we say, hey, you know what? I don't know how different I really am. Would it make sense for me to give you a 30,000 foot view of who we are and what we do? And you can tell me if it would make sense to continue the conversation. That is another 30 second commercial. So, you know, they're, they're, they're very, very powerful. I like to say it's like your bait and tackle box. You know, I mean, where you go fishing, um, you use different bait. You know, you go in the ocean with a worm, you're not going to catch much, right? But so you want to have uh, those pains. You want to, you don't want to sound like a robot. You mentioned tonality. It's a conversation. All selling. That, that's what Sandler is. It's conversational selling. It's about them. Let me share with you who I am, what I do. Here's how we help. These are the issues, problems, concerns, right? Typically, I deal with owners of companies and uh, corporate executives who they have really good people. They're growing year after year, but for whatever reason, they're concerned that they don't have enough new quality prospects in the pipeline, or maybe they do, but they find that the sales cycle is getting longer and longer and they're just not closing them. Or perhaps they find that they close them, but it's not the margin that they're used to making. Their business has been commoditized. So Mike, I don't, if this, if you were the prospect, I don't want to assume, I know all businesses are different. I don't want to assume that you experience any of those, do you? And it's a nice, easygoing way to, to have a conversation. But you have to yeah, I, I love that. We're going to dive into the the structure here a little bit, bit more and we'll talk about those different parts. Yep. But I think the a few things are key. You said really specific pain points. And I think as we wrap up attitude here, you got to think about making your 30 second commercial as personalized and specific as possible to the person or group that you're talking to. So if you're on a podcast and you have no idea who's out there, it could be thousands or hundreds of thousands of, of different people, you're gonna have to do, shoot a pretty wide net. I like you're using your fishing and, and bait yes. analogy. But yes. if yes. you're specifically cold calling one prospect who you did a pre-call plan on and you researched, you could say, hey, Danny, I saw that you're hiring salespeople right now on LinkedIn and I wanted to know if you were struggling to find top talent, keep top talent, or uh, get people onboarded quickly so that they can stay in the role longer. Do any of those things sound familiar yeah. uh, or ring true to you? Then we're getting really specific to that one person's need and we have a much tastier bait there. Yeah, no, that's good. And I, I love, Mike, how you, uh, your, your approach you just mentioned about personalizing, you know, the approach, you know, doing a little research, not just you know, calling and calling, but knowing a little bit about uh, the prospect that you're calling. Um, also, when you're speaking to different people in the same organization, perhaps that are they're in different positions, they have different pains. So you again, you're fishing ba uh, your, your bait and tackle box. You want to make sure you're pulling out uh, the right types of uh, the right types of pains. You know, to to address those people because a CEO of a company has different pain than person who is you know, at a management level and, and so forth. Very important. All right. Now let's get into behavior and doing the right thing at the right time. And I think we can talk about the structure. So yes. if we're writing our 30 second commercial, it's actually a tough thing to do. I think it's hard to talk about yourself. It's easy to write one for somebody else and be like, oh, I know what they do. They, you know, sell bait and tackle to uh, local <laughs> fishermen right. and, and it's easy to write. But if you are doing it for yourself, I think people get twisted up like a resume and they try and use a lot of hyperbole or big fancy words that aren't conversational and it, it gets tough. So 
help us uh, set up our goals, plans, and actions here to make sure we yeah. can. Yeah. So, you know, really what it is is certainly your opening statement, your name and and who you are and, and a positioning, you know, statement, you know, who, who's the company, where you're located, perhaps, right? And then we get into pain, uh, what we call the pain statement. And really the, the way to look at that is, well, there's a couple things, you know, there's that acronym we call a FUD WACA, right? Which means, you know, people who are, right, what are they frustrated, right? Why are they uh, under pressure, uh, disappointed, uh, worried? You know, these are all emotional words that go into that, um, you know, that little uh, group of letters I gave you, right? Um, and and so, but what you want to do is think about, uh, and, and if you're new to, the, to, to selling and, and if you're experienced, Think about your best clients and why they came on board. Why, what were they experiencing before they met you? That, and what are the problems you were able to help them solve? You know, you mentioned hiring A players, right? In, in your commercial before. We help people to hire A, A players, right? That could be in my commercial to help people with how to identify these folks, how to conduct the interview and so forth. But in mind, you heard the pains. I've helped people who are frustrated that they don't have enough new opportunities. I help people whose sales cycle is longer and longer and they don't get decisions, right? All these types of things. So go and think about who are your best clients? Why did they come to you? What were they experiencing before that? And then you want to have what you would call a benefit statement. And Mike, this is where I think people start to go, oh my God, now is the opportunity to do a whole feature and benefit dump. That's where they have the difficulty because there's so many things they want to say, but you really just need one line that encapsulates it all. You know, I developed mine throughout the years just by the way that it works. And, you know, we do reinforcement training, but I say we help people through our ongoing reinforcement training, making incremental change a little bit at a time, like training a sales athlete or a sales musician. I found that over the years that works for me because people know that you can't get in shape in a day. You don't learn a musical instrument in a day. And um, and so that so the benefit statement is what they uh, they wouldn't want to do. One sentence. And then we have yeah. if you want me to stop there, go ahead. If you want me to go on. Well, I want to uh, jump yeah. in here yeah. on that one real quick and then we'll do the last part. So not yeah. to interrupt. We have four parts. We're on number three. But I agree with you on the benefit statement. I think people get uh, twisted there. So I wanted to highlight it's the stuff that makes you different from everybody else in your industry. So you don't need to tell them what a sales training or, or coaching and development company does. They kind of get that. They're already in the, the ballpark. What they need to know now is how are you different very quickly and, and simply. And so anything that any of your competitors could say, like great customer service, you know, quick turnaround times, good value for the money, all of that is generic sales, you know, pavlum that, that anybody can say. So what's really unique uh, about you, and I, I love the one you shared about, we really stick around. Most sales training is boot camp based or an online course based, or they figured out one little piece of the sales pie that, that is their trick or hack. And then um, they don't get to stick with you long enough. They they take their suitcase, fly on to the next city and leave That's you there right. to, to figure That's it right. out on your, your own. Uh, really and I want to respond to Mark all there. Uh, he asked if this is being recorded. If you are watching live, we are recording. This will be on, on YouTube and uh, Facebook and the podcast, how to succeed in any podcast app. But if you're live right now, you can share comments and join the conversation with us. Part number four, Danny, is the best yes. part of the whole thing. Yeah. Well, that, that's the hook question, right? And, you know, you mentioned, Mike, I just have to say this, you know, this helps us, you, your competitors are not doing this. Your competitors are all feature and benefit based, right? So the last line here, this hook question is, is uh, really doing the opposite of what your probably competitors are doing. And it's gonna sound like this. Uh, Mike, I don't suppose those are issues that you and your sales team are experiencing, are they? I mean, that's one version of a hook, right? Um, Mike, all companies are different. I don't wanna say that I know how yours operates. Are you experiencing any of those types of things that you find? in your organization. So it's a hook question. Uh, maybe the, what we call a negative reverse here at the end. I don't suppose you're experiencing any of those. And so that's, that's uh, I think, also gets people, um, shows people that you don't have commission breath. <laughs> because commission breath would be, Mike, you're ex I'm sure you're experiencing those, aren't you? 
I mean, and all of a sudden, yeah, can well, we can we talk about how your sales team is doing right, right now? Right, right, exactly. And then, as we know, people resist, and so what we're doing is we are acting as a professional fisherman, if you will. Right, the amateur is going to pull the line and not get anything. The professional sets the hook, patient, and lets the prospect say yes or no. And uh, and that's what I meant earlier when it helps you to qualify and give you leverage from early early on in the conversation and why it's so important. You know, I, the other thing Mike is being prepared. I'm going to I'm going to I'm going to give you more credit here Mike. In one of the earlier podcasts many I'd say years ago once somebody said the separation is in the preparation. You were talking to somebody it was about data mining but I really wrote down the separation is in the preparation and you can't a Sandler, a Sandlerism. If you don't bring it with you, you're not going to find it there. To say, hey, I'm going to jot down a few things and show up at your meeting. Oh, I'm going to, here's my 30 second commercial. It's not going to happen. You have to own it. Own it. And what we do is we teach, it's a profession. And, and, and professional salespeople have a, a 30 second commercial. You should wake, be able to wake up in the middle of the night, the night and be able to recite it. Not sound robotic but know it. Yeah. I wanted to highlight one thing on the hook question there, mm -hmm. which is that's another one that can kind of change depending on where it is. So if yeah. you're using this 30 second commercial in your LinkedIn bio, yes. put a little call to action link there and say, Hey, if you would, uh, I would love to talk to you about any of those challenges. If, if that's something you're experiencing, uh, click here for my Calendly so you can set an appointment or click here to, to learn more about what we do or our next event or download a white paper. Any of those things are great. If you're in a big networking event, maybe it's like, hey, I would love a referral for yeah. anybody you know that fits this description that I just gave. And yeah. so there's some different options, but the whole point of this is to start a conversation, to yeah. get things back, uh, kind of knock the tennis ball back over the net see what they're going to respond with. And then we can continue our improvised dialogue here a little bit. So this is yeah. just one of our prepared tools we have in our bag. We bust it out and then we stop talking as soon as we can so right. we can get them back in the conversation, right? Yeah, no, good. No, I appreciate it. And th good job, you know, also, Mike, just sharing the, the different ways with the hook question and where it can be used. Because, you know, if you're if you're a, uh, you know, a keynote speaker or if you're speaking to an association, you know, you don't have to be, I don't suppose you're experiencing those, right? You'll say, hey, I find different organizations experiencing that. You might as well. I mean, you might be also. So, yeah, you're not, you're, you, you have you have to adjust. Um, and uh, and that's why it's such a good, a, a good tool. You know, that's, that, that, that's going to help to give you leverage. It's, it's a thought provoker. You know, if you're an association and you're giving a talk and, you know, that was pretty, you know, I, I experiencing that. That hit home. And when you hit home with people, they pay attention. Right. And so yeah. if you do your commercial to a group uh, and, and you're in a, you know, a, a committee, you know, and, and new people come in, you want to be able to do your commercial so that it hits home with them and then you have their attention. Right. So now we've talked a lot about technique already. Yeah. We've shared a lot of places you can do it. We've shared the, the parts of it and how you write the script. But I'm wondering if we can kind of pull it all together here or think of any other tips and, and tricks. The first thing that comes to mind is that no pressure cold call. How do we use it for a conversational opening? What goes before and after the, the 30 second commercial? Um, so let's do the after first. Let's say somebody says, hey, that sounds great. And you got a live yeah. one on the line. Yeah. yeah. Then where do we go next? Yeah. Um, so if you know, I'll, I'll tell you what, can I, if I can, I mean, I could do the cold call, but I'm gonna, we have something called the three foot rule. There you go. I just yeah, want to share yeah. how this works in real life because it's the exact thing that you're saying. Just instead of a call, it's cold. I'm three feet from somebody. I was at a networking event. Somebody got out of the car, tall, distinguished, gray-haired guy. I'm the short, distinguished, gray-haired guy. And uh, and and we were walking. And I said, three foot, stand on the three-foot rule. If you're within three feet of somebody, we have an obligation to start speaking. So I said to him, "Hey, what do you do?" He said, "My name is so and so. I own the." Uh, X largest insurance company in New Jersey. Um, and uh, and uh, we were headed into a networking event, uh, an annual luncheon. And I said, uh, he goes, what do you do? I gave the exact commercial I just gave here earlier. And at the end, I said, but, you know, X largest insurance company in New Jersey. You guys probably don't experience any of that stuff. He said, 
were you kidding? I've got senior people who are, uh, you know, who are, you know, are in prospecting. I've got junior people who don't know how. I've got the frozen middle. I said, so and so, would it make sense for me to reach out to you on Monday and invite so you can invite me in and 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 have a conversation about this? And he said, absolutely. And the next thing you know, I was speaking at their sales meeting. So in answer to your question, where do you take it when somebody nibbles on it, right? And I think this is where you're going. We go into what we call the pain funnel. We get curious. We say, how so, Mike? Yes, I'm experiencing one of those, Danny, right? Well, how so? Tell me more. How long has it been a problem? Hey, would it make sense, Mike, to invite me in and have or, or hop on a Zoom and have a further conversation about that to see if we can help? So does that answer the question about where you were going and what you were looking at? Yeah, I, I love that. I, I call it a, a mini pain funnel. We don't have to go all the way down there. We just need to ask, yes. uh, go deeper with this yes. and dig down the funnel a little bit and see if there's anything really there worth having a conversation afterwards. And yes. I think it's um, really interesting to me because especially in these first interactions, we don't have to get married on the first date. We don't need to do the whole sales call here as we're walking in to an event. We're just doing a mini introduction, a little bit of our story to get their attention. If they bite on that, we do a little mini pain funnel. And then we do a mini upfront contract where we say, hey, what would you like to do next? What would you like to happen next? Let's confirm that. Can you add it to your calendar now? Or uh, can, I, can we tap phones and exchange contact information here or, or something? And right. we can keep that ball rolling in just a mini conversation. And then yeah. say, hey, have a great event. Is there somebody I can introduce you to and move on from there? Because especially in these cold calls or cold introductions or when it's not right to have a 90 minute conversation about the problems and challenges, right. then we probably need to move on from that pretty quickly. But yeah. we want to do some discovery and we want to make sure we set that next step, uh, which is great. Now, you got a really good testimonial from uh, Robert Meyer here. Uh, he says he had the best sales year of his career. Oh. Uh, coming off of that and using the type of tools we're using here. And uh, Robin, one of our other Sandler trainers said, build pattern interrupts into your 30 second commercial is another key difference. So if you have a comment, go ahead and share them in the, the chat there and we'll respond to them. But any thoughts on pattern interrupt? Do you have something that really separates you from the competition or a way to, to change people's thinking about stuff in a 30 second commercial? Um, you know, I, I think it's more about... Um, when you're trying to get somebody's attention, you are actually um, doing the opposite of what somebody expects, right? So if you heard me say earlier, I might have, but hey, it's Danny Wood, did I catch you at a bad time? I mean, so many people would say, um, why would you do that, right? People are just gonna say it's a bad time, but typically they don't, right? Um, and so, you know, there, there are, I, I was just talking about one in my class this morning of a, of a, of a trade show. We're walking up in a trade show and actually, um, I'm just sharing all these different prospecting techniques where you can use this. And, and I actually said to somebody, they go, Hey, how you doing? You know? And I said, well, I'm, I'm the last guy you're ever going to want to speak to. I, I do sales training. You guys probably had a magnificent show. I'm the last guy you would ever want to be speaking to. So I get it. No, not really. Traffic's been a little slow. Uh, you know, what do you do? Did the 30 second commercial. Um, and next thing you know, I'm, I end up at a, you know, and the, the, you know, the decision maker wasn't there, but they got me the meeting at, at a building and, and they became clients. I'm just, you know, it, so in other words, don't go at it with, I'm sure you need what I have, right? It's yeah. very uh, opposite of what people expect to get their attention so that you can, they will actually uh, listen. Um, but pattern interrupts is a big part of what Sandler does. It's doing the opposite of, of what people expect. Yeah. I love that. We've talked a few times about the negative reverse, asking in the negative, starting mm -hmm. in the negative is great. Upfront of uh, objections are great. You kind of shared one there. Like, hey, I'm mm -hmm. sure you're already using somebody. Starting with a pattern interrupt like that is a really way to, uh, a great way to help them lower their defensive walls and, and have an open, honest dialogue. Like you said, the new Sandler rule number one is a conversation between adults to uncover the truth. Yes. So if they are using their their sister-in-law uh, for their insurance and you can't talk them into switching, it's best to know that up front and, and recognize it and have that, that conversation as adults. So that's great. 
Danny, uh, thank you so much for, for talking about how to nail your 30 second commercial. Now, before we let you go, I want to ask you some cheesy job interview questions. But oh, I also want to remind everybody that you can subscribe to the podcast, iTunes, Google Play, or Spotify. You can go find more information at sandler.com. And we have a summit coming up. Uh, it's every year, but in March of 2023 we'll be back in orlando live with like a thousand of the top sales and leadership professionals from around the world and cool speakers from around the world too so if you want to attend go to sandler.com slash summit for more information now uh danny i yep. you've been on the podcast several times here so i'm just gonna ask you we're starting the year here what is your next goal do you have a, a big hairy uh dream plan or or mission for 2023 yeah i mean i i have a bunch uh what i'm one of them i'm almost most, most excited about i mean i i don't know if it's exciting to you but to me you mentioned earlier i love the vidyard app and i love the fact that you know i i'm gonna be doing a lot more with that i've been doing it um but i i think you know having that cadence of um of whether it's a linkedin whether it's a call including you know again we use vidyard use whatever you want but you know um and, and I, I, it's been very effective for me. And uh, you can use that from an account management perspective of whether it's a sign and you're wishing somebody happy birthday or something, or you want to, you know, you're reaching out to somebody with the 30 second commercial. So, um, you know, when it comes to, to my goal, um, I have, you know, uh, 10 a week, you know, of, of sending out 10 videos a week. So, you know, for me, from going from a couple to 10, uh, you know, with, with all the, you know, with, with everything that we do during the week, uh, you know, that's, uh, I think that's pretty, pretty good for me. Yeah. That's a fun yeah. answer. One of mine is to do more live stuff, uh, like this. So we've been recording these podcasts for eight years and challenging myself to, to go live and it's working out. I appreciate the, uh, comments. We got another one. Let's see who is, uh, uh, James just says, what, what? <laughs> Uh, I don't know what that was responding to, but we got him in a pattern interrupt there. Okay, uh, all right. So yep. that's great. And um, I wanted to ask you, do you have a favorite Sandler rule? I've asked you this several times, but we just came out with a new set and a new book, How to Sell to the Modern Buyer. Yeah. Any Sandler rules jump out today? You know what? I, 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 always, I, I like that people don't argue with their own data, um, which you have as- uh, That's a new one, have. yeah. And, and because it reminds me that, you know, you really have to ask questions and stop, you know, don't bail somebody out. It has to come from them. Right. I mean, you know, the, 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 the what was one of the, and I gave a talk on it when we did these menu questions once, but, you know, unless you ask questions and your prospect learns something that they didn't know before you came, before they spoke to you, then you're no different than any other salesperson. And so if, if you can ask questions so that they, it comes from them, they don't argue with their own data. If I said, Hey, you know, this is, can't you see, this is costing you a million dollars a year. Yeah. Yeah. I know. But if they figure it out, you know what, that's costing me a million dollars a year, you know, well, is that a lot of money or a little money? I don't know your business. It's a boatload of money, right? It's coming from them. You can, you can just, feel that now it's their discovery process, right? You know, we often talk about, oh, you know, discovery. Let's do a discovery call. Well, what are we really discovering, right? So let them discover that it's costing them a lot of money, time, security, status, whatever it is, right? Production. So it has to come from them. So people don't argue with their own data. And I find that we'll all get a lot further if we uh, follow that rule. Yeah. Ask questions, make them say it out loud and make them give you the, the data, uh, make them go do some homework, uh, look into their situation or at least articulate what their challenges are. I think that's a great final tip to end on. So again, Danny Wood, Sandler trainer from New Jersey. Thank you so much for joining us. I am Mike Montague, director of community. Uh, like and share, help us out. Uh, send this to somebody that you think needs to hear it. If you have a salesperson, sales leader in your network that you think needs to uh, or would appreciate nailing their 30 second commercial to start better sales conversations, share this episode with them. Until next time, you can uh, subscribe, go to sandler.com for more information. And remember, whatever you are, be a good one. We'll see you next time. Good luck, good selling, everybody.